Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM and if you're enjoying the kind of stuff that you see on the channel at the moment the links to all our social media are over there in the video description. Today we're off on a mini adventure and the thing that I dislike most about my fine BMW here is the fact that it is just so damn common. So what you've decided to do is take it to a place where there's even more minis. Yes which seems kind of bizarre, but it does show just how this car is special alongside the old classic Mini you'd expect. So we're doing the London to Brighton Mini Car Run. Which is something quite exciting, with a big variety of, well, Minis. From things of the classic, all the way through to its most modern iteration. And the things I really like is the fact that people modify the classics, which I'm expecting to see a lot of there. So we'll start with my favourite of this lineup, which is an 80, well, I say is a 1989 Mini, it was a 1989 yeah. Mini. It started life as yeah. a 1989 Mini. It's a collection of different parts, it's the nicest way to put it. Various parts on the front end are Series 1 and the rest of it is not. You, you say that's the nicest way to put it, but I think that's the best way to put this. This is better than the sum of its parts. Oh yeah. I, this has created something brilliant. This is true. Now, you may notice from the looking at it that it is not necessarily got that kind of stance of a stock mini hmm. it, it, it's it's got the cheeky arch peep yes and this isn't been added to it just because it looks cool no this has been added because what lies beneath in there is not original within this beast lies a 1380 cc engine which has had high lift rockers high lift cams it's basically the works done to it with the straight cut gearbox so it's a race machine, and you might not think it when it's only got a 1.4 litre engine with, I think it makes about 90 to 95 horsepower. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but it is tiny. It's, it's tiny and it weighs nothing. And I mean, crash safety was something we didn't really think about in the 80s. So um, yeah, my, sketchy and my lovely. My single favourite thing about this is the fact that the owner has upgraded the seats with it to take his slightly larger than mini designed frame. Yeah. Which means that there is absolutely no room for anybody in the back unless you physically have no legs. You, you don't need passengers, but what you do need in these cars, being six foot individuals ourselves, is yes. the, the extra headroom generated by pushing these seats a little bit further back is much appreciated. I have driven this and I can confirm it is the single car that has the greatest desire to kill me out of anything. This thing you get into and it just says, I'm gonna kill you, straight up. It doesn't lie, straight up, which means that from this high point of what you can modify this to be, this amazing little shape, this absolute icon of British engineering. It feels like we're going to slide down a slope now as we come over here, doesn't to it? To this. Yeah. Now, I, yes. It's, it, it's a little bit tatty, but let's, let's overlook the fact that it's a very tired dog and explain just what this Mini is. It's A mistake. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so this, this was kind of BMW's first attempt. It was made with a lot of hangovers from old Rover parts and the like. This is the R50, to give it its model, which is the Rover 50. This was what was penned to be the replacement for that, but mm -hmm. it never kind of came to fruition, I guess. And it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. And I think, to be honest, it's quite a fun and lively car, but it's... <laughs> we're, we're putting up against stiff competition here. Let's be brutally honest, it's, aren't we? Nothing you could ever do as a follow-up act we'd ever come anywhere close. And this isn't a bad car, but it's not a Mini. One thing I will point out about this, is, especially when we move on to the later generations of car, and in particular the cars we don't have here, like the SUV iterations of the Mini, which we, we can all agree that. are not Minis, is that this car is actually still quite small. Certainly when it came out, it wasn't, but by today's standards, this is still small. And if we compare it to what has now replaced it, which is the F56, we can see that this one has grown even more. And until recently, I thought this was the same size as my 2004 model. But no, this is a 2014 14. model. And it is notably bigger in this part. It's more sizable mostly because it has a much larger and better engine. And to be honest, this is actually an incredibly fun daily. This is a great little hot hatch here. Yeah, it genuinely is. And this kind of lives up to the original more than the middle one does. Because it's still relatively small, as modern it, cars go. In terms of the rows today, yes, it's small, but it's, it feels big to me, and I'm... Oh, it's bigger, than, it's bigger than most of our cars, to be honest. But it's got that fun factor. It's mm. got that... Having been out in this, it kind of 
just about lives up to the John Cooper works label on the back of it because it is rapid and it is fun and most of all it's just stupid. Well I mean it has AC for a start so it's also practical unlike the first example we showed. AC, what an amazing thing. You used to have AC. Yeah it doesn't work on mine, that's I think. This is actually, I don't hate this but it's still not the first one. But that's enough basic of these. What we're going to do now is going to go and join the rest of our mini brethren. Which means we've got a little bit of a drive to get there. These feel like good roads for a mini around here. They really do. And it's really nice to actually be with, well, minis. Yeah, I, I mean, superior minis, in my opinion. I, I, I cannot, I cannot. I think it's your it. opinion as well, isn't yeah, it? This, this is, I like this. I do it's like this. It's a good car. But it is definitely the lacking of it, because that one in front of us is just amazing. Gorgeous. It's, 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 a, it's a killing machine, but it's amazing. And the one behind us is infinitely better. It's just better. a great car. Yeah. yeah. I, I've always, I'm a big small car enjoyer, but I've always kind of skipped over the this era of Mini for some reason. The classic Mini I love, I, I would own one in a heartbeat, but this one I've, I I've think never it's the same thing. It. I think it's the same thing as me. It's because they're so common. You assume because they're so common and everybody has one, they're not going to be any good. I don't even think it's so much that. I'm just, That's cool. But yeah, you, you did point this out that this was out and about today. Would you rather drive this or that? That, 100%. 100%. But that said, there is a certain amount of fun being in a convoy with the same vehicles. Like, I mean, we, we are now quite experienced at vehicle convoys, aren't we? Yes. And it's always fun being out with your friends driving a convoy, but doing this with the same cars... It's a bit more special. I mean, I think we've done it in the MR2s before, I think, yes. once. Once, but not fun. Yeah, I mean, they've, they, they didn't survive too well, did they? Uh, I remember when we both had working MR2s. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe I could get a working Mini instead. Do you know what? If you, I would fully support you getting one of those. I've, I've, I was in the market for a long time with classic minis. The only problem is, is that I look at them now and they've gone from where they used to be five hundred pounds for one, which was a bit crinkly around the edges, but otherwise solid, <clears throat> to five hundred pounds will buy you an utter rusted shell. One of our friends has recently just done that, haven't they? They've yeah. Acquired a rusted shell. But that said, they're not actually too expensive in the grand scheme of classic cars. You can still get a good running one for four or five grand, and which most, is reasonable. And the most important thing is with one of those, you can get absolutely everything for it. Yes, you can build a new car from all the panels yes. you can acquire. Yes, it's you can. insane. And I, I don't think there's going to be that kind of love for this. No, and I, I think that's kind of a shame, really. I mean, there'll be some people keeping these about, particularly the spicier versions, but this particular one, I mean, £250, I mean, someone thought it wasn't long for the world when they sold it. No, and which is what terrifies me most about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite excited for this whole thing, like to be part of something when we get there and we see all these cars and line up. The competition is that we set up, dear viewer, can we find a more scabby version of this generation? than this car. Yes. Now, I do want to point out that there is over a thousand cars at this gathering. The car behind us is ticket number 1300, and it's ticketed on cars, not attendance. Yep. And I don't think there's a very high chance there's going to be a worse one than this. But I, I, there might be of the original ones, but certainly I don't think of this generation, because anything worse than this is probably not road legal. Yeah. I think with the original ones, though, if it was a worse one, it would look aesthetically more pleasing. Yes. It, it would be a survivor, whereas a worse one of this would just look uh, abused. bad. Yeah, abused is a good term. Uh, going back to the ticket numbers, I have ticket number 666. Which we're taking is a really good sign for a vehicle which Laurie owns. 666, you literally couldn't make it up. <laughs> People say there's a curse. I <laughs> the best proof of the curse is real. I have so far looked at our friends in the classic mini ahead of us and it has stopped twice now on our journey. Yes. There's been a fuel pump failure and an exhaust rubber which decided it didn't want to be made of rubber and wanted to be two pieces of rubber instead. And he just looked at me and was like, this is your fault. I was like, I haven't touched it yet. I disagree. Oh, Duke's a hazard one. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. I can 
can smell the barbecue from here. And, 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 and a petrol. It's a no drone zone. Yeah. As you can see, we have successfully arrived as we are surrounded by many, many minis. And the point of this, to go and show that it's not such a bad thing to have a common car, has rather backfired. Because so far, at this event of like a thousand minis, I haven't seen another one of these. It's full of the classics and it's full of the new ones, and particularly the, the shiny John Cooper Works ones. But the bulk standard old version, it's a rare car! I thought you were going to go there and then but if Charles and Laurie go on the other side of the car there. Yep, fine. So we have two pens here, one pen there, one pen there. Yep, good. I don't know if my tent will Following our nice drive to the campsite, it was starting to get quite late, so the first thing we did was to set up our tents, something which Matt was able to do rather easily. Sadly, my tent wasn't quite as simple, and involved two of us to attempt to put it up. And the most notable thing about this was the fact that my help apparently had never put a tent up before. Hello. Do you have any idea what you're doing? Not a clue. Okay. I've put whole things in holes. Probably. Meanwhile, Matt has succeeded in what he was doing and actually got a tent sleeping bag and looks somewhat ready to go. Laurie, your tent's not very secure. That's, that's how it... Oh, just... Next was the most important thing. The lighter has a purpose. Food. The lighter has a purpose. What have you done? It didn't work. It didn't work. Right. Where's the gas can for it? Uh, so, to, oh, just, to, just to confirm, because you can't have a barbecue on the floor, we yeah. have a barbecue on a barbecue on a barbecue. On a barbecue. There was nothing in the rules about saying you couldn't have a barbecue on a barbecue. It just says barbecue can't be on the ground. Yeah, exactly. It, it was a good squeeze. It was an Alfie squeeze. The evening's entertainment proved to be very good as well, as more cars arrived. And after all the excitement, it looked like our dinner was made as well. And with my belly full, I set off to go and have a look at the big lineup. Now, the option was to bring your car here in the evening, or, as we elected to do, leave our cars by the tents to make life easier to put everything back into and drive them down in the morning. However, even though it wasn't every car on site, or the cars that were meant to be turning up in the morning, it was an absolutely stunning thing to behold. All these minis lined up together, and I know it sounds stupid to say it, but I literally have never seen so many minis. It is as literally as far as I can see, minis. Which I mean, it's the whole point of it, but it is literally as far as I can see. It's actually genuinely impressive. I can't tell you out of the some 1300 vehicles in attendance, how many people elected to stay the night and avoid the 5 a.m. check-in. But it was quite a lot, and you may be wondering, well, how on earth did I manage to work my way back to our tent? Well, that was easy. I just followed the smoke. And the smell and sights of a barbecue laid low over the whole campsite for the evening. And it was absolutely magnificent. Alright, that's all the meat for this evening going. Oh, look at the skyline in the background. So, um, this is bed for the night. I didn't think there was room for an airbed. My colleague did think there was room for an airbed. Good night, all. Coming up in part two. Oh, yeah, look at that, that's fine.
Ah, I see the AA has pounced and caught its first victim. The repo works. So if you can't find number eight, and of course, we'll answer that question of do we actually make it to Brighton or will the curse of ticket 666 hamper us all? Let us know in the comments what you think guys and thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.